Welcome to Chapter 9, Community Critique. This is where we go into the premium members group. Before we record a new course, we will announce, hey, we're looking for this type of image for critique. This happens to be couples portraiture for weddings, and that's what we're looking for. And these submissions are from the premium members community. This is a great opportunity, guys, to have your images critiqued. And also, it's a great opportunity to jump onto SR Lounge forward slash critique. So srlounge.com forward slash critique where you guys can submit images and have them critiqued by the community at any point in time. We can mark up the images, we can do lots of great stuff. And in general, I would highly encourage this. Getting your images critiqued in a second set or a third set or a fourth set of eyes on your images, well, it can kind of hurt at times because these are our babies, but not like, like, like literally, but like figuratively, our photographs are our babies, you know what I mean? If it was like a literal thing, that would be really weird. But if you can take that critique, you guys are gonna grow that much quicker. So let's go ahead and jump into constructive critique. We're gonna start with Adam Hacking of Hacking Creative. And we gave a little shout out to all the people that submitted. So thank you, Adam, and thank you everybody for submitting. This is the first image, and I, I placed these in the frame where basically we wouldn't have too much cropping going on. So, so I think there is space below the frame, but I would shoot these types of images just a little bit wider so you're not necessarily cutting off like the dress. And even if you have it in the frame, the problem is that when you go to print, usually when you print, it's gonna cut off the edges anyway. And so if you end up framing too close or too tight, all this stuff is gonna get cropped off regardless. So just give it a little bit more room and frame. Now, a couple things that I'm looking at, I noticed that the door is actually partially open in the background. It's kind of one of those annoying things that I notice those types of things, but not a big deal. The big thing for me is the way that her wrist, her wrist right here is kind of broken. See this angle that it's making across the shoulder. I like that we can see where it's coming from, but I also noticed that there's quite a bit of distance between their hips right here, which is a little bit odd. So I would have him pull her into him just a little bit tighter. Um, this hand is fine, although we are missing a thumb right there, just the way that it's placed. The main other issue is the way that his fingers are positioned. We talked about how the hands and the fingers are kind of pointers. And right now, this one finger is pointing basically right down to his crotch, which looks like he's trying to show us something. Is he trying to show us something? It's not appropriate, not appropriate. But that's one of those things that I would correct. So when you notice that, just say, hey, open your hand lightly or, or do whatever. So you can correct the wrist, you can have her place it in a little more soft and delicate position so it doesn't look broken. I love their expressions though, and you know, like we've said, expression trumps all, right? And they have good expressions here, it's really cute. Um, that's kind of cute how their noses are overlapping, but I like to see the before and after image in the sequence. When you're shooting the sequence, make sure you just pop several images because you want to basically pick the best one. And sometimes it's the before or the after shot versus maybe that one that you're just trying to nail. So shoot rapid fire through this. Only other thing I'd mention is I would tidy up her hair right here and also right here. The hair right underneath the arm looks like it's basically becoming kind of like armpit hair. So I would kind of just tidy that up a little bit. Just notice you are sh uh, shooting basically into the broad side of her face. You can see that the part is right here. So if she said, I favor this side of the face, great. But if she didn't, I would have flipped their sides. So that way you're shooting into her part. It'll make the face a little bit more slim. It's usually more flattering. Uh, and it shows the part, like kind of the decoration. Not the decor. You don't decorate your hair. It shows the way that her hair is done. So that's it for that image. Now this image on the right side, I dig this image, but there's kind of a... Okay, what, what, what do I love about it? I love that this is very well composed. It looks like you were from the other side of this museum or building shooting across, so all the lines are straight. Everything is like, you know, nice, and it, it just looks great from that standpoint. And you might have done some perspective shifting and stuff and kind of distortion correction, it looks like a little bit. But that part looks great. What I think was missed here is an opportunity to make this into something really incredible. Take that background technique where we light the background for a silhouette or semi-silhouette. If you put a light right behind them and fired it against the wall and brightened up this little kind of circle right here, so it was kind of like a nice circle that was brightened against the wall and pulled down the exposure of the frame, you'd end up with something really cool and really dramatic. And if you put a CTO gel on it and cool it down, it would look amazing in color because you'd have this spot of yellow that just draws you right into this frame that's probably, majority is gonna be blue from daylight that's bleeding in through like skylights, basically what it looks like. So that's the thing here is I feel like there was a great opportunity for something just incredibly epic. Granted, I don't know if you could put down a light stand there. You might not be able to depending on where this is, but if you can 
or even have just someone do it real quick to get away with it, like have an assistant go do it or just place it there and just do it. You can get a really cool shot in this scene. But I love what you're doing with the, the framing and everything like that. And I think it's really great, super creative. This, this is another tricky one too. Here's a couple things. For me, number one is her hair is concealing a little bit too much of the face. So her hair is, we, we see just this little sliver of her face right here and it's just not quite enough. We're also losing a lot of the form in her figure. Her back is kind of almost straight up and you can basically fix that by having him pull her tight. So on this backhand, pull her in tight and it'll arch her back more so that you get more of that kind of lean and have her drag one of these toes back a little bit. That'll give you that kind of drop in the dress and that drag in the dress so it's a little bit more exaggerated in the curves. Also, it will bring the hips closer together. So that being said, that's kind of the main issue there. I would also make sure they're centered up against the door. I think the center of the door is like right here. So they should be over to the left just a little bit more. The other thing is, I don't know if you can light this scene, but the light on them is just a little bit messy. And if it were possible, to hold a gridded flash right here and just add maybe like 1 32nd of gridded power onto them just to clean up that light a little bit as well as to darken down the ambient light. Why? Because this statue and this statue, they are just almost completely blown out. They're just going white. So they're the brightest points in the frame and therefore my eyes are being drawn to these really more than it is the couple. What I think is going for this image is that you have this person and this person both framing the couple, which is nice. But these people that are holding still, well, it gives me something else to look at. And what I would probably would do is, if it's possible, either hold very still and shoot a few images so that you can get everybody moving and composite this. So basically when you layer the images, you can mask out one person that's moving, mask out this guy when he's moving more so you get him moving, mask out her when she's moving so she's moving quicker and take a few different images so you can kind of perfect it. Or put it on a tripod and increase the shutter speed just a little bit more. But a little pop of light and kind of doing those things with the pose and, and bringing the exposure down just a little bit, I think would really help this image to kind of just really pop a little bit more. All right, so let's go on to the next video. Our next subject for verbal bashing, Adrian Ong of Let's Make a Memory. Adrian's actually a former workshop student. Awesome guy. Super cool. All right, so Adrian, I'm gonna be a little bit more critical because you've taken my classes in person. So let's talk about this image on the left. I dig kind of the pose and the way that he's leaning her head against her, I like that. I would watch the chin on his side. So just have him to go chin up a little bit so you don't get as much of that kind of curvature and uh, double chin going on underneath him. Um, but I like the framing, I like the crop of the head, I think that's all fine. What I'm not a huge fan of is all this kind of messiness that's getting backlit right here. I would really try and pull this hair back a little bit more um, so that we're not getting just a crazy mess of backlit hair. If we were to print this, we would need to basically clean up. We would draw an edge right here and clean up the hair so that we don't have kind of that crazy flyaways going on below, uh, below a certain point. Like I would leave some of the hair but clean up all the crazy flyaways. Next thing I'm noticing is, um, here's one other flyaway that we'd probably like clean up, but in post. Um, it, her head is just turned a little bit too much and you can see that because there's necklines right here. So turn the head back just a little bit so that the neck is not fully creased like that or you can open the shoulder up just a little bit so she's not kind of turning into it so much. So you can kind of fix that really easily. I would also be aware that her, her face is um, a little bit not symmetrical and we have a little bit curvature in the lip that's going up on this side. If that is the case, then you are shooting from the correct side. This would be the correct side to shoot from, which is basically the non-symmetrical side, so that way those things don't get exaggerated. But what I would try to do is with a lift like this, I would shoot it from the other side too and just see if it's a little bit more flattering. Um, and I would just try both angles. And you don't have to tell her what you're doing, but just give it a shot and see. See what you, uh, what you think. But overall, this is really nice. I like it as a light and airy portrait. I think you can kind of brighten the exposure up a little bit or just pull the whites down a little bit and get the skin tones a little bit brighter just to soften up some of the lines and stuff in the eyes and that kind of stuff so we can go a little bit higher. Let's go to the one on the right. So the one on the right, um, there's a couple things that are bugging me a little bit. One, we have this flare going on, but really the main thing is the way that it's cropped along her neck, I don't see any dress or anything. I like that you're working up underneath the veil and I think it's really cool, it's going for something creative, but the crop at her neck is not gonna do it, for me at least. I like his crop because it shows part of his suit. 
I would have cropped her at the place where at least shows like the necklace, like get a little bit more of the frame in there so we can see a bit more. Um, also, it's a little bit of an awkward expression. They're not quite kissing. I'm not quite sure if this is the moment before or right after. So I might have actually completed that kiss because it doesn't quite look, it, it, look, it feels a little bit posed is what I kind of mean. And also the way that the chin is placed right now, we don't really have much definition in the jawline. So again, bringing the chin down a little bit um, would be really great in this instance, kind of like, or, or just shooting from a slightly higher angle. If you could possibly get up a little bit higher and shoot down versus shooting up, because we have a lot of nostril in this shot. You'll notice that you're kind of coming up into the nose based on the way her chin is going up. So you either need to bring her chin down or you need to shoot top down on them so you're not getting that look. Also, I noticed another kind of distracting flare right here, which is a little bit odd. I like overall where it's going, but those are some of the refinements that I think could really make this pop. Just get a little bit wider, go onto a 35, go onto a 24 when you're working in that tight and incorporate a little bit more of the veil and the scene and everything. All right, let's keep going. This shot. So this shot is kind of one of those things that, well, I'd want you to do more with. Um, they're being lit, it looks like, by the sun. So it looks like the sun is coming straight over here. Now, what, could have, what you could have done is basically light with the direction of that sunlight. So if you place a flash down where the sunlight is coming from and light into them, and then you pull down and darken the ambient exposure more, you end up with a better looking image where they pop. There's also things that we could do in the step. So you'll notice that right now, her hip is kind of going out low right here, and we also have a bulge right here, which is kind of odd for the form. We have a lot of energy in the arm with the bouquet up, and so what I probably would do is adjust the hips a little bit and drag the bouquet a little bit so you get a little more pleasing shape in the hips. Turn this shoulder back a little bit more towards the camera. I like the way he's looking back at her. I think that's great, and then I'd probably have her kind of looking a little bit more, bring the chin back to the camera and looking down kind of towards the ground as she's walking along with him. And get her to lean into that walk, because that's what's kind of, for me, it's not quite selling it right now. But the main thing for me is that they're lost in this scene. Their brightness is about the same as this entire scene, and the scene itself is not necessarily that great where I want to feature everything that bright. So I would brighten them up, and I would pull down and darken the scene a little bit more, and make it a little more dramatic, get the light on them, match the direction of sunlight so it still looks natural, but it just has a kick to it. Okay, so those are the things that I would kind of mention with this frame. All right, and then also I would shut these doors, by the way. If you can, just shut these doors and Photoshop out things like these little, you know, lights and stuff like on the building to kind of clean it up and make sure you straighten your lines. Um, one last thing too is, is you have them actually walking and exiting the frame. So because they're placed on the closed side of the frame, my eyes kind of go right out the image. So if you're gonna have them walking, usually you wanna have them walk towards the open side of the frame, which for this image, you'd need to pull the frame all the way from this edge over. And it might not work compositionally, but just understand that this has that effect. If you don't want that, put them into a different pose where they're not walking off the edge of the frame, basically. All right, this guy probably needs to be shopped out because we can't quite see what it is. It just looks like a plus that's up in the corner randomly, and this guy. Let's go on to the next video. Carlos Arturo Zambrano of Casados Photography. It's a cool name on both parts. I like it. Let's do this. Okay, so image number one. And I left the edges wide on this so we could see basically the full crop in this image. I really like this. I love the, um, the kind of light and the look of this frame. I think it's great. Um, the hand placement is fine. The crop is a little bit odd, kind of coming right across the joint right here. So that's a little bit odd, and we also kind of get the fingers. So I, I would have gone maybe a little bit wider or a little bit closer. Um, so like either kind of crop like here or come down just a little bit more. Um, I love the expression. His expression is fantastic. I'm not a huge fan of necessarily not seeing any of her face. Like what's really natural and nice in this kind of a scene is to have her actually look down and towards the right side while he's looking into her. And that way you can see her face and see her profile and it looks really nice. Um, I'd also have her roll this shoulder back just a tiny bit to get a little more pleasing shape in the body and uh, also in the neck. So my main thing here is that you'll notice that the neck is kind of made to look very large or larger than it actually is. This comes from rolling the shoulder back and having a little bit more of an angle will give you, and, and turning the chin to the right and everything, it's gonna make the neck look not as large. 
It's happening because the neck is concealed on this side where it goes up and into the hair, and on this side, it's being kind of pulled down to the right because the shoulder is turned in more. So we can do that and make it a little bit nicer. Pull his chin up just a little bit to kind of flatten this out a little bit more and get a nicer jawline on him. Uh, but yeah, it's a really nice shot. I'm just an FYI, there is something going on over here, like white. I would just simply clone this out because it doesn't quite match the rest of the background, so it does stick out a bit. Um, it might just be the water, but it also kind of looks like a person, like the way there's a black leg and kind of a white shirt, it almost looks like a person standing back there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this Dutch angle thing, um, especially for shots like this. It kind, of, it kind of works because the background is so blurred out, but this angle is very, very strong, so I might lighten that angle up just a little bit. Maybe you turn it back just a little bit more, or even flatten it out just a little bit, but that's just a, a thought for you to think about. A perfect scene, by the way, to start working inside the veil. Okay, next shot. Um, this is nice. I really like this. Let's take a look at... Okay, so one, we're cropping all the fingers and wrists and right across all the joints right here. Like, literally, one joint, two joints at the wrist. We have a thumb. We have fingers. We have a lot of joints being cropped off right there. There's also this kind of odd white thing in the background, which I would try and frame out if possible. These little white things try to frame these guys out. Um, but I love the light. The light looks beautiful. I love the way he's leaning into her. This set of tree branches right here, if you can place them a little bit more forward or just, if it's something removable, you can remove it, but just bring them forward a little more to get them blurred out a little bit. Because when they're that sharp, it draws a lot of attention to the shape. Unlike this in the background, which draws much less attention. I like the way she's looking down to the left side. You are shooting into the broad side of her face, so this is gonna make her face appear wider than it actually is. Well, it makes it appear wider. If we shoot from the parted side, then we have that concealing kind of thing helping us out. It's also not the most flattering angle for the jawline because we see a, a curvature to the jawline and also like a kind of a puffy cheek on this side. So again, I think going from the other angle would probably get you a little bit something more flattering. But that being said, it's still a great portrait and the expressions really trump everything in this image. And the expressions alone, I'm gonna write expressions and then capitalize it, I mean, with an exclamation point. The expressions are so good that it trumps all the things that are kind of slightly broken about it. So remember, expressions are always kind of paramount. All right, last shot. Let's see. Well, okay, so a couple things going on. These guys in the background, either Photoshop them out or ask them to just step out for just a moment. Uh, it looks like our background is slightly tilted, like the lines aren't quite straight. Uh, to the point where it looks more like a mistake than something that was done intentionally. I'm not a huge fan of like the flamingos. I'd probably just pull these out and set them aside, you know, like this kind of stuff, uh, and just set it aside until I'm done and grab it again. Let's talk about the couple themselves. This free hand that's just hanging right here, it feels a little bit awkward. I might just put, place that into his pocket. He's also slouching. You can see it in the way that his shoulders are kind of curved and rolled forward. He's not taking air into the chest, so have him take air into the chest, stand up tall, and get him to straighten out. You can kind of see that whole curve in his spine right now. Also, we can see a tiny bit of his fingers appearing on the other side. Have him hide his fingers on the small of her back, and have her roll the shoulder back a little bit so you don't get this poofy arm thing going on, and just create a little bit of space between the arm and the body. I think there's an opportunity here to show off more of her form and figure. We're not seeing much of that, and you can do that by just turning her out towards the camera more, placing the arm behind the body like we've done several times in this course, using the body, or using the arm to kind of frame the body a bit more. I like the way that they're leaning into each other. I think that's nice. Um, I don't like the way that her chin is kind of up so high, but it's far enough away that it's not too big of a distraction. What does bug me a little bit more is the way that the hair is going right over her eye. So I would just have her brush the hair back so at least you can see her eye a little bit, uh, her eyes a little bit better. Okay, so those are the main things that I'd fix there. Um, close up the gap between the hips too. Like, so when she turns and opens the camera a little more, she's gonna naturally close that gap up. Also, open the train up just a little bit. So the train is not like sitting very nicely on the floor. So just open this up, have a nice pleasing shape to it. And that's really all I would change here. I love the light, I love the sun over the mountains and everything and it looks great. Um, obviously there's nothing you can do about these power lines. So this is something where if you wanted to print and frame this, I'd probably remove that before I did that, uh, before I printed it. But great job, let's go ahead and move on to the next video. Dalbir Verdi of Seek and Dread. Dalbir's one of our awesome premium members and active in our community. Let's do some of these images 
I, I, I really like these images. They're really cool. Now, Dalbir, I love the way that this is produced. I love the way that the dress pops. I think you did a great job, like, detail enhancing, and I think that looks fantastic. I love the scene. There's one thing, one thing that I think would just make this image just stand out. You're about one stop off of a really killer image. And what I mean is background needs to come down by negative one stop. Couple needs to go up by about plus one stop. Brighten them a little bit, darken the background a little bit, and at that point, they're gonna pop so well, and it's gonna really separate, because right now what's happening is the whites of the background and kind of the framing and everything that's going on back here is just a little bit bright enough to pull you away from what's going on in front of you. So darken that down a little bit, it'll be fantastic. It's just some small things, I would move the couple over a little bit. See, here's your centered line from the door frame in the background. That should actually be right where the sword is. So if you wanted to go for this, and I tell you that because it looks like you're going for symmetrical composition. So if you're going for that, then place the hands, like where they're holding hands and where he's holding the sword, just a little bit to the left so it lines up with that line and you have a nicely framed symmetrical composition. I love the expressions, I love the drop in the veil, I love the opening of the dress. I think everything you've really nailed on this shot, that's the only thing that I would make a, a difference there, in my opinion, is just separating the ambient light a little bit more from the couple. And it looks like you did add a flash because it looks like they are brighter. I just think it should be beefed up a little bit. Beef it up a little bit more, beef it up. Beef it up. All right, let's go on to the next one. Now here, it looks like we have the same couple in the same scene. And uh, here's what I'm gonna say. I like this image far more than the one on the left. The one on the left is good too. Uh, there's a little bit of issues in terms of like the posing, like there's a gap between the hips and stuff like that, and that's, that's fine. Maybe you're trying to go for that uh, because you want spacing. But if that's the case, then I would bring his arm off her back because his arm is going onto her back and it doesn't need to be. If you want to create spacing, create spacing. If you want to bring them in close, bring them in close. But this is kind of that in between. I'm not a huge fan though of the lighting in this. Um, it's not quite a silhouette and it's not quite backlit and it's not quite, you know, exposed for skin. It's, it's a mixture of all these different things. What I do love is I love the highlight that's catching the frame uh, right here that kind of does a great job. I love all that stuff. It's just the lighting on them is not doing it. You didn't really decide on what it was that you were going for in the frame, whereas in this image, I feel like you did. In this image, it felt like you were going for a silhouette and it's done much better. It's pulled out wider. We see this great warmth to the image. We have good framing and good like kind of composition. We have good silhouettes on them. It looks great. This one is stuck in between, and that's my main issue of that. All right, let's go on to the next one. Okay, so for this shot, this is where I'm gonna say, remember we talked about the body language doesn't quite match, and this is what it feels like to me is going on right here. If you were to tell the story of what's happening in this pose and frame, it kind of looks like this woman is being assaulted, basically. Because she has one arm going across the chest, one arm going up to the other side in a mirrored pose, and it basically protects her breasts. Now, when a girl does that, it's a, it's a sign of, like, basically, they're protecting themselves from a stranger. And that's the way it kind of feels to me, is that you have this guy kind of almost creepingly putting his hands on her hips as she's kind of covering up to protect herself. Now I think you're going for something a little more editorial, and so the way that I would do that is if you cross one hand, make the other hand do something else. Like bring the other hand up to him, or cross one, let one drop. Do something different with the hands where it's not both hands covering up and concealing because it feels like she's being violated, basically. The other thing, too, is that you have the nose just barely breaking the plane of the face on this side, same with the lips, and so we could pull it back just a little bit so we can see the eye, bring the nose within the framing of the face, and it'll look a little bit nicer there. We have some tension here in the neck, which is probably being caused by the way that the shoulders are up there, but there's quite a bit of tension there. I don't mind the way that the guy is posed and leaning into her. I think that's fine. It's mainly that the body language on her side is not selling me on what you're trying to convey in the image. This one I like a lot more. Um, I think the, the body language and everything is, is lining up quite a bit better. I do think that you framed him a little bit too close to the edge, especially if you were to print this. It's just a little bit too cropped. I would give yourself more room, allow yourself to crop in post, uh, so you actually have the flexibility. 
But there's a couple things that aren't quite working for me. One is the way that the hands are placed right here. So the way that her arm is coming down like this, and the same thing on this side, it's a mimicked pose. So she's doing the exact same thing on both sides, and it makes it feel forced instead of natural. Based on the expressions you have going on, it looks like you're going for something natural, but based on the way that their hands are positioned, it looks like it's been posed. So instead, have them hold hands on one side, maybe relax the hand down and bring the hand around on the other side, but vary up the poses and vary up what their hands are doing because that would be something more natural. Also, generally she's not gonna have, if she's looking down, her chin should be angled down. So she needs to pull the chin down a little bit and look down towards basically like her shoulder while he's looking down and towards her because you wouldn't really keep the chin up and then close the eyes, right? That looks kind of odd. Usually you'd bring the chin down and the eyes down to the ground and have kind of that nice soft kind of appearance of closed eyes, but you know that the eyes are actually just looking some other direction. So that's the thing for me is that, that it's not quite selling it right there. Also watch his chin because we have a little, little bit of a double chin there. And that's the main thing that I would critique on this side. I like the, the way that this image looks. I like the black and white. I like the softness of it and kind of the bright and airy look to it. it looks good. Um, the only other thing too is that the, the straight profile for her is making her chest appear a little bit flatter than you could. You could bring her curves out a little bit by angling her just a little bit more to the camera and getting the chest expanded a little bit more. So the way that you do that is bring the shoulder back. So bring the shoulder back, turn them into the camera just a little bit more. That's it for this. Hopefully that helped out. Let's go ahead and move on to the next video. Humberto Garcia of Humberto Garcia Photography. Let's take a look. All right, Humberto, I love this shot. Okay, let me tell you what I love about it. I love the compositional element of this tree that kind of juts up. I like the way they're placed against this and kind of in that frame. I love the light and airy production of the image. I think it's fantastic overall. I love the color. I love everything about this. Here's the main thing for me is if this were a photograph of, let's say, the husband looking towards the wife, the wife standing up tall right here, and her looking down towards her son. I'm gonna draw the dress, there we go. And the son was looking at the camera or maybe interacting with dad, I don't know. If that was what was going on, it would make sense to have this wide environmental portrait here. Now I'm hoping, Humberto, that you took other shots that are close to us, because what ends up happening for me in this frame is I see the action happening and we're so far away from that action that it doesn't quite make sense. It would make sense if this were a family portrait and you could see all their faces and it was about that, but this shot feels like it's really more about what's going on right here. And that's what I wanna be seeing is what's going on right there. And so I would zoom into that area very tight to capture that action. That's where the action is happening. So that's my thought. If this were a portrait, it'd be great to have an environmental portrait and then go up close to get more shots. But given that this is a candid moment, we're a little bit too far away from it. But I like everything else about the image. This shot. Okay, what do I dig about this? Well, I love the fact that it looks like you've added a good amount of light to the couple. So the couple actually pops quite a bit. They're the brightest point in this sea of people and that's fantastic. I like the lights coming through here. I think that looks great. I might have darkened down the ambient light just a little bit more, maybe like by a half stop, pull it down, and then bring them just a little bit up by, again, not more than like a quarter to half stop, just to get a little bit more balancing and a little more attention drawn to the couple. But my main thing about this is, once again, place the camera up on a tripod. This is, this is my tripod, I just drew it and shoot this scene with a little bit of a longer shutter. Let's say like you take the shot, it's on a tripod so the camera's not gonna move, right? So shoot the scene first at one second and make sure that you got the couple tack sharp. Then what I would do is I would extend the action of the frame to maybe like anywhere between two to five seconds, depending on how fast people are moving, right? And shoot a few frames. Now, what I would say you to do that is take the frames and layer them in Photoshop. And the same way that we would mask a stand out, what I would do is mask out the people that are holding still. So these people right here, this people right here, right? All these guys that are holding still in the frame, I would mask them out so that you pick areas where they're moving. Keep the shutter speeds long enough that everyone is blurring because what happens for me is the people that are holding still are really detracting from the couple and from the overall effect that you're going for. So that's a great way of a busy scene like this where you can't coordinate everything at once to get the perfect frame. Go up onto a tripod, 
take multiple shots, even if you have to set up, like say five to 10 layers, it's not that much work to come out with an epic shot. You can do it in like five to 10 minutes inside of Photoshop. So that's my main critique for you, Humberto. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next video. Wes Jordan of Wesley Leon Studios. Wes is another one of my former workshop attendants. So Wes, I'm gonna be a little more critical of your images. Actually, they're, they're, this is a fantastic shot. I freaking love this shot. And as a composite image, Wes, I think you nailed it on the head with this photo. There's a couple things that I think you could take into consideration for next go around. Um, let me point those out. One is basically the crop, right? So on her, the crop is good, but notice that his sword goes out of frame, so it, it appears to be quite long, whereas hers is actually in frame. I might carry that out of frame as well, so it, it doesn't feel like hers is like this stubby sword. We all wanna have, you know, full length lightsabers. It's like an equal opportunity thing. Give her a full length lightsaber, don't shorten it up. I love that, but the other things that I would do with this is there's a little bit, I mean, for a composite look, could you spend a little bit more time here and here getting the hands and everything to be perfect? I think you could. I think you could spend a little more time getting it flawless and getting the, the blend and everything, but this is a wedding photograph. So a limited amount of time is gonna be probably ideal because you don't wanna spend 10 hours on something like this. And I think it's already past the point of being great, okay? What I would think about is you've got his hand cropped out as it exits this frame right here. You've got his legs cropped right at the knees basically on both sides. Her dress is fine. But this is one of those cases where going a little bit wider, give yourself a little bit of room to work in that original shot so that you can basically crop later on. And so you have the entire people present in the frame because it feels odd that his hand is extending out of the frame. It almost makes me wonder what he's grabbing outside of the frame. So that's one of those things that kind of takes me out of the scene is that arm that leads me out. I love her posture and her position. It looks fantastic. Her expression looks great. His expression looks great. I love the extended lightsaber. This is all working and, and you can see, like look at this. When you follow her arm up into her body language, she's leaning in and she has that expression and it takes you right down the arm and up the sword right to him. And he should be doing the same thing, but instead we go to the arm and then we go out of the frame. Okay, likewise with the legs, they kind of take us out of the frame based on how they're cropped. So just kind of go a little bit wider um, with, the, with the original crop and that'd be great. The other thing too is that you've got a nice bit of green kind of on her uh, highlights right there. I would also get a little bit of red in there, like get some red in there so you can kind of get the sense of like both of these lights um, reflecting off of them and do the same thing on his side. Brighten him up just a little bit, get a little bit of green and red kind of mixed in there. Um, and, and that's really it. I think as far as a shot goes, I mean, as is, it's great. It's good enough. And I hope the clients absolutely love this because you did a really killer job. This is one of the best kind of Star Wars renditions I've seen. Really good job over the background too and the blending. All right, now these two images. So this is a vertical image and I cropped it um, in a way that we're not cropping out anything important as we see this. So it's shot vertically. I have a couple issues with it. I like the, the placement of them in terms of like utilizing this light that's coming through. It looks great. The only thing is that it feels odd. Um, the way that his hands are kind of like resting across and the way that he's looking down, it feels like he's not really that into this moment. And the way that she's looking, it looks like her eyes are actually closed. So instead of looking towards him or leaning into him or hugging onto him and having this nice embrace, it feels a little bit like the body language isn't quite selling the story. So what I would have done here is lean the heads into each other, get the heads leaned into each other, have her holding and hugging around him, have the bouquet placed on her lap in a way that is not concealing their bodies and show the arm as it's looped up and as she's leaning onto him and as he's leaning onto them, or leaning onto her. And then when they close their eyes or look down towards each other, it's gonna feel like a natural moment as they're relaxed underneath this tree. I like the play on lighting and I like the way that you're doing all that kind of stuff. It looks great. I think just a little bit of perfection in the pose would be awesome. I would also lift the blacks just a little bit. So just bring the blacks up a little bit so that the hair, see how the hair, the suit, everything is getting lost in the tree just a bit. So either get a little bit more light onto them with a little bit of modification, a little bit of light addition, or just lift the blacks a bit so he's not sinking into the tree and kind of disappearing. This shot, I think this shot is great too. Uh, this is a really interesting image. Um, these look like cars basically placed behind them. My only issue with this shot is, well, I like the silhouette and the form, but notice that when they're holding hands like this, you don't see anything 
in this area. So there's not necessarily a point to standing them that close when you want to produce it this dark and black. I would pull them apart and have them hold a hand and look across the center or go for a kiss across the center so you get two really nice silhouettes with their bodies fully outlined. The other thing too is that this is going to be a stylistic thing, but the black is just a little bit too deep in here. So my, my issue with this is that I can't really see any other part of these cars. Like I don't know really what's going on in the background other than just these lights that are kind of lighting them up. And I would love to see just a little more detail here. I'd love to see a little bit of detail on them. I think this would be fantastic if produced as a semi silhouette as opposed to this full, just crushed black image. Also, um, with it crushed black, you have these little specks and flecks and stuff on the ground as opposed to like actually seeing what's on the ground. So that will kind of help with that too. And the last thing I'd probably do is just clean up a little bit of the flyaways. So some of the flyaways that are standing out a little bit, I might clean up before this actually goes to print. I'd also make sure that I can see the top of the head right here. So maybe add some uh, highlights there if the light was not enough to adjust basically. So add some there and put the hair right along her neckline behind her back. That way you have a clean silhouette on this side of her. So it doesn't look like she actually has fur on her chest type thing. Cause it, that's kind of what it looks like when they have hair on that side and you backlight it. It looks like there's actually like fur on the girl's chest, which last time I checked, I've never had that be a request. Just saying, just saying most girls don't want to look like they have hair on their chest. Guys, for sure. I love, I always want to look like I have lots of hair on my chest always, which is not a problem because I am Iranian. So there's that. All right. Last thing, just adjust your lights a little bit so you get kind of a nice chiseled out um, edge lighting around their entire bodies. I, I know you're using the cars for the most part, but what can really help in this scene is just pop another flash down. Pop another flash right behind them that kind of simulates, you know, it kind of follows the light direction, follows everything about the cars, but it, it ends up perfecting the outline of the couple because it hits them exactly the way that you need. And you're not going to see in the frame and you're going to still think that it's the cars itself. Remember, lighting with the existing light direction still works when your existing light direction is artificial and it's coming from cars. It still works during the day, it works at night, it works anytime in any scene. That's it, guys. And that being said, we have one additional bonus chapter for post-production. We're gonna go over a few different videos, just kind of on the different techniques and the things that we're doing in this course. It's not gonna be anything full length. We've got tons of that already in past courses as well as in the Lightroom Workshop series. We have it all. So. Reference that stuff if you want full length post-production tutorials from start to finish. We have the Lightroom Crash Course and Lightroom uh, Image Processing Mastery. So we have just in-depth 25 or something images that we work through from start to finish. We also have the workflow. We have a lot of different tools on that side. I hope you guys enjoyed this course. Remember, jump onto the premium group. Remember to submit your images to constructedcritiqueonsrlounge.com. Hope you guys are loving premium. My name is Pi and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.